No more. Okay. Three months of waiting anxiously. I was confident in the process and the barrels, uh, but you're always nervous, I think. Are finally over. A charter boat named the Kindred and used to hauling in salmon is ready to give up her precious cargo. Six 15 gallon casks of bourbon are set to be unloaded. After the first one is removed, Kerry Shaw Brown can't wait any longer. You wanna kinda just mix it up down in the cask here. It's time to sample. Kerry first dreamt of this moment years ago when he could no longer easily find the fine bourbon he sought and he began to wonder. Could I blend a series of bourbons and create something that was really complex and refined, but still a really smooth type of sipping uh, bourbon? After spending the last five years making at least two dozen different batches of bourbon, Kerry felt confident he was ready for market. But he wanted an aggressive aging method, one that could age the bourbon years in just a few months. To do that, he would need a boat on Lake Michigan. So he contacted a friend who told Kerry he had the perfect solution and would make a call. That's when the phone rang at Kin Sport Fishing in Algoma. And he said, you got to meet this Kerry. Um, he's got some big ideas. He's, he's starting a small batch bourbon distillery and he wants to get you guys involved. And I'm like, you know, this is the middle of our season. And I'm like, I, I really don't have time to be digging into bourbon, but it sounds interesting. I said, have him give me a call. Kerry called and pitched his idea to the two co-owners of the charter company, Captains Troy Matson and Brett Cook. Intrigued, they said yes. You know, we get some bizarre things over the years where people ask you to do some different things out here, but this one kind of took the kick. Kerry's barrels of bourbon arrived in July. Once loaded onto the Kindred and placed in her berth, the waves of Lake Michigan awaited. When we put them on the boats, the idea was the constant movement would allow the bourbon to reach deeper into the, the charred oak and pull out more of these flavors that make it so special and, and pull all the rest of it together. With about 800 pounds added to her load, the Kindred went to work, not only hauling anglers twice a day, but the bourbon as well. Immediately, it became a constant topic of conversation. Yeah, the guys would go down, uh, use the restroom, or the gals even for that matter, and they'd be like, what do you got going on down in there? And That's bourbon. And they're all excited, and you'd be amazed how many people have spent the rest of the trip trying to do research and whatnot on uh, the product we were holding for Carrie and the boys. The Big Lake, of course, had to do her job many days she did. I'd be getting texts from from Captain Brett. Um, the bourbon's really getting a workout today. It's six footers. And so yeah, he would update me from time to time. And, and you were thrilled. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think we accomplished what Carrie wanted and that was uh, really to mix them up well. And boy, after this September, everybody knows how windy it was. We took a beating out here. So he was pretty pleasantly surprised when he tasted it, was he not? I was like really, really stoked because it was exactly what I was hoping to do. All the initial samplers rave about Carrie's bourbon. It definitely 10Xs the, the flavoring of this product. I mean, it's, it's outstanding. Including Corey Hallberg. I do like whiskey, yeah, a lot, so it was, it really piqued my interest. One of the first fishermen to be intrigued by what he saw on the boat, he drove four hours from Upper Michigan to get a taste. Worth every, every mile of it. It was amazing. It, one of the best whiskeys I've ever had, and I'm not just saying that because I'm here, I'm saying that because it's really good. When it came to a name for his bourbon, Kerry chose the Maelstrom a nod to the legendary whirlpool off the coast of Norway, known for swallowing boats. To me, sort of echoed what I wanted to happen inside those casks on the boat. I wanted that kind of turbulence, and so the Maelstrom was just one of those, again, historical reference that I really, really kind of loved, and it stuck. As for the aging in rough water, Kerry's inspiration can be traced way back in his family tree to great-great-grandfathers and uncles who sailed as Great Lakes captains. Some of them actually did go down with those ships in bad weather, and so this is kind of a, 
a bit of an homage on one hand to family history and the history of the Great Lakes. A history that one day may include tales of salmon boats becoming bourbon boats. Brett and uh, Troy have been the, the perfect match for us and, and also just Algoma. Um, it's been a city I've spent a ton of time in even since I was a little kid and um, it's a great port set up here with the marina. It just, it kind of all came together. The first bottles of the first batch of the Maelstrom will be on store shelves in November. The second batch of barrels, and there will be more next time, will be on Kin's boats next April. In Algoma with photojournalist Michael Bergman, I'm Jeff Alexander for Small Towns.